Hello everyone, it's Farkad here. I'm going to show you how to get the gun in day one. Now as you can see I'm doing this on hard to show you that it can be done. This is the gun, it's called a flintlock pistol. It's one shot only, it takes about three to four seconds to reload. It can be great at the start. So here I'm trying to get coins because you'll need to make bombs along the way. I'm going to be speeding up the segments that are irrelevant and focusing on the ones that are relevant. This cave here leads to the katana and there's heaps of resources to make bombs down there. To make bombs it's booze, circuit boards, watch and coins. When hitting suitcases there's a 5-10% to chance you can get a watch but it's pretty rare. So the reason I'm stopping here is to get the red paint and I'm going to continue on to the main cannibal village as the hut directly in front of me right there has four sticks of dynamite so that covers half the bomb sites and the hut next door has three circuit boards in it. As you can see with the red paint they're not actually trying to attack me but it's a bit unpredictable. But it does pay to keep it in block. The items that destroy caches are bombs, sticky bombs, head bombs, and dynamite. Molotov cocktails don't work. What I'm doing here, I'm just assigning dynamite to my backpack. This cave here. This is an easy way to get the modern axe. You only have to fight two cannibals. There's also a ton of dynamite at the bottom. Here is the first bomb site I'm going to. What you want to do is light the dynamite and keep pressing C around the cache and eventually we'll put it on there. Move out of there as quickly as possible. Dynamite has a much larger blast radius than normal bombs. Once it has exploded, it's safe to go near. You don't have to worry about the flying rocks, they won't hurt you. It's good to take this route, as you can pick bombs along the way. Save using your own. I got a bit lost here, but that was okay. I was heading directly for the coast, but I was a bit off. Keep in mind when you're placing bombs on the caches, that trees will fall. Now, trees won't kill you, I don't think, on normal, if they land on you but they probably will kill you on hard. So keep that in mind. I don't think block actually helps when a tree's falling on you, but give it a go. I do know that armor negates a lot of the damage, so if you're on hard and you've got armor, it won't kill you. Just look up when you're placing the explosives. Make sure those trees aren't heading your way. Dynamite doesn't explode if you leave it too long, but it does make you nervous. But don't worry about it. I've left it there for two minutes lit and it won't blow up. That's the second one done. What can be a good idea if you're not confident going through the forest or you're getting attacked a lot or any reason is to build a boat and go around the island as five of the caches are actually on the coast so you don't have to worry about going inland so much. There's only three that are inland. There's one in the cannibal village next to the big one, there's one at Swan Lake, and there is one in the snow. Now this one is up near the big tree on the end of the peninsula, it's very popular to build there. Along here there's heaps of suitcases, booze, that sort of thing, and there's the boat over there. There's some supplies on that as well, not essential to what you're doing here. Now I'm walking the long way around because jumping up on the rocks is quite difficult now, you can't really climb rocks as much as you used to be able to. The equipment you get when you blow up a cache is the gun piece. You sometimes get ammo, but you also get a chance of getting rope or a watch. A watch is good because it can help you make the bombs. You can eat berries along the way or collect them if you have the pouch. I'm getting the chicory here. Keep an eye out for cone flour so you can make energy mix. Keep you going along the way because you'll be running a lot on this day. There's the third one. That's the third one done. 
if you can't find the C around the caches when you're trying to place the bomb, you can just chuck it at the ground near the uh, cache and it will blow it up. Now here is uh, another pot and a safe station there. Now it's not that island next to the big tree on the peninsula, it's the next one along. As you're facing the ocean, it's on the island to the left. Now this part we're coming up to is quite difficult because you're going to be swimming next to sharks. Well, one shark hopefully. Now it shouldn't attack you if you stay further enough away. Just make sure you stay close to the top of the water, to the surface, and check your breath. It can be a good idea to conserve your energy, because if you ever need to swim away in a hurry, it's good to have that energy. There's a the shark there. Now at that distance, it won't attack. If I got about three or four or five meters closer, it would probably come at me. If it does come at you, face it onwards, and when it gets close, shift and straff left or right, and its chomp will actually miss you, most of the time anyway. On normal, it won't kill you in one hit, on hard it might. Also, if it's chasing you and you run onto land, the sharks do bug out and chase you onto land. Sharks can swim faster than you, so keep that in mind. That's the fourth one done. This is a safer way to get across back onto the mainland or onto the islands, as it's much shorter to swim, and I've never seen sharks in this part, but don't quote me on it. Always keep an eye out. Now I've got my ocean quality on flat, it makes it much easier to see underwater. On low or high quality, it is much more difficult to see. Here is a good place to get circuit boards and booze. Once you're done here, head up towards the forest on the top of that hill there. The forest within the forest. Here's the cave that gives you the key card that gives you access to the end game. There's an armsy down in there though, a big one. Not recommended at the start. This one's right next to Swan Lake on the high ground. If there's cannibals chasing you while you're around a cache, a good idea is to lure them around the cache hole and then place the dynamite pressing C. If you throw it, they'll run away. If you press C on it, they'll just stand there a lot of the time and blow up with the hole. So it's a two in one. That's the fifth one done. Here are some more suitcases, if you need that. On your left down here is a cannibal village. There's some supplies down there. Down there is some tents where you can save and sleep. Now here is where the chainsaw is down here. I've got a video, I'll place a link here on how to get it in three minutes and even without the rebreather. There's also two cans of fuel down there. What you want to do is head across the land bridge here. Now there's a cave running directly parallel with it. Head down here if you need watches, that's what I'm doing now. Because as soon as you go in, there's quite a few bodies hanging up and there's about five or six watches here. Watches are the hardest part of the bomb I find. Keep in mind when you're trying to pick up the watch, if your inventory is filled with watches, these watches tend to fall through the floor, so you'll lose them. So I can pay to use your watches first. Before you leave it might pay to actually make up some bombs and any energy mix and eat or whatever while you're here. Especially on hard because it doesn't pause when you go into your inventory. You're safe in there as there's no cannibals or mutants up at that top bit. 
So once you exit the cave, turn right and keep going. If you're looking to carry an extra bomb, you can combine a bomb with a head. You get the heads from cutting the heads off cannibals once you've killed them. It's just an extra bomb to carry. It does do more damage, but it takes a lot longer to explode and it rolls away very easily. So it's very difficult to actually hit anything with it. This one's got a deep pit that you can fall into, but you can get out. That's the sixth one done. This cannibal village has a lot of supplies, a lot of suitcases, a lot of booze, cans of drink, snacks, that sort of thing. After you've reloaded the game, because the gun pieces respawn, sometimes ammo respawns as well, so it can pay to look in there and see if there's any ammo. Now there is some chainsaw fuel. I think there's two lots, but I think I may have missed one. Here, you want to turn right and take like a Z or Z shape pathway. As you can see there, and it will take you straight to the next bomb. That's the seventh one done. Now, once you've blown up that one, turn right. And as you can see up the top there, this is the snow area. My advice is to walk along the side of the snow instead of going into it. Being in the snow, you use a lot more energy because it makes you cold. If you have a fire torch, it will keep you warm so you won't take damage if you're standing still. If you've got no warm armor, you'll take damage after about seven seconds of standing still. Jump over that river and keep going. Turn left. And you'll see this big lake here, frozen lake. It's not actually frozen, but yeah. It's actually a popular place to build. It's actually, it's pretty fun, but it is hard because you have to deal with the cold. There's the eighth one. And the last one. I'm going to make a fire stick while I'm assembling the gun as I don't want to take cold damage while I'm standing there. So add your eight pieces together. And that's it. The pieces can be hard to see in the inventory, but they should be there if you've picked them up. It takes about 25 minutes to get all the gun pieces in one day. You can generally do it as soon as morning starts and you should be able to finish it before the sun goes down. My advice and what I do is get all the gun pieces in one day because you forget which gun pieces you get after you've been playing for a while. So it's just an easier way to keep track of it all. When you reload the game, the parts for the gun actually respawn. So what you can do is make your gun and go and pick up all the other parts again. Once you've done that, place the gun you've already made on a wall and then combine to make another one. This can be good if you want to make a trophy gun or like your wall. But other than that, it doesn't serve much purpose in single player. In multiplayer, you could do it and give the gun to someone else. Or they could just do the duplication trick. That's pretty yeah. easy. I think it hasn't been fixed yet. I don't think they can fix it. It's where a player joins the game and gives you all their stuff and leave without saving. And once they enter the game again, they've got all their stuff back. If you like this tutorial and want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. I try to release videos daily, focusing mainly on tutorials. If you have any suggestions for videos or needing other help, leave it in the comments. I'll see what I can do. Cheers.